Mark, when you uh, go into the locker room tonight, what are going to be some key focuses that you'll talk to the team about before they run out for their, their final game in the regular season? Uh, just play to our identity, um, be who we are, and run through the finish line of the season. You know, we've had uh, 81 games down, uh, go out there and continue to play the way that we've built to play um, and finish the right way. Mark, uh, what, what is the identity of the team, uh, especially with the players that are scheduled to play tonight? Um, well, I mean, we, we want to have an identity that transcends who plays on a given night. Uh, I think there's no better example of that than the Clippers, you know, what they've done this year. Um, down a lot of guys, you know, they've been able to stay afloat um, and really thrive and, and have the whole be better than some of the parts. And they position themselves now when they're getting healthy to, um, to make some noise going into the play-in. Um, and I think that you know when you have that, that's a good thing for your team. It allows you to continue to be adaptive and you know handle injuries and handle roster turnover. Um, and we want to be a team that you know defensively competes and does so together and is feisty and makes teams earn against us. And offensively, a team that plays through advantages where the holes better than some of the parts where guys work together to create advantages and play off of those advantages. And I think um, throughout the season we've. You know, built that up, and, and that's stronger. Both of those things are stronger now than they were at the beginning of the year, which was the goal. Mark, is the plan to go with six guys again tonight? Uh, I mean, we'll see how it goes, but I mean, it's going to be very similar. Gotcha. Mark, uh, look at next next season, um, because obviously, in your two years, you built this team in a certain type of way with the guys who are the core guys on this team. Obviously, a lot to look forward to, and. You mentioned how the Clippers have had a progress through this year. They kind of have an eye to next year as well, uh, different circumstances because this guy is getting healthy and everything. Uh, how do you how do you kind of keep that perspective of you got work in the in the current, but something big to look forward to uh, down the line? Yeah, um, we just try to make sure that everything that we're doing now can scale forward, you know, and and making sure that we're not trying to. Um, you know, burn the boats today, you know, just to win the day. We want to make sure that we're constantly investing and constantly planting seeds um, and doing so environmentally, make sure that the environment that we have is, is one where people come in and they can thrive. We want to do that with our program, make sure that if our players attack the program, it can get them as close to um, their potential as possible if they're committed to our program. You know, we have to deliver a first class um, program to our guys if we expect them to you know, attack it in a first class way. Uh, and then player development, you know, we want to make sure that our players are better through the experiences that they get. And um, those are the three areas where we focus on investing. Um, and when you do that day after day after day, there's a cumulative effect of that, it gains momentum. Um, and that's, I think, how the, the outcomes, you know, start to turn over time. Um, but we don't chase the outcomes, really. We're, we're focused more on the investment process of that and we'll continue to be as our team gets better. You know, that's how you, you know, whether you're where we are now and you're trying to become a successful team or whether you're a successful team and you're trying to sustain, the mentality's the same. And so I think um, we've done a good job of establishing that uh, with this particular group um, and need to continue to do that into the summer. Mark, we talked to Melvin before the game and he, he just, you know, talked about his path back to the NBA after being in the G League for almost two years now. Um, you mentioned the other night about like, uh, re rewarding these guys who have put in time with the blue. Like, how does it feel to reward a guy like Melvin and, and just sort of stick to his, his path if you can? Uh, it's great, you know, when we're in the position to do this, which this year we've been in this position a few times. These guys are on hardships. Uh, Melvin's on a two way, um, Sar was on a two way, and then um, the, the COVID situation earlier in the year, we've been in a position where we've been able to. Um, it's great because they, they are such a big part of our program, you know, especially when they play multiple years with Blue or they play Summer League. Um, those, we see those as huge platforms for uh, the growth of our program and our individual players. And uh, the quality of those platforms oftentimes comes down to the guys that you have there. You know, you don't have pixie dust. You need people that are committed and that are optimistic and that are hardworking. Um, and we have that in that Blue program. Melvin's a great example of that. He's been put in a lot of different situations. He's had times where his playing time has been more limited. He started to come off the bench. Um, we traded him at, you know, midway through this season. Uh, and throughout it all, you know, despite the inconsistency of his experience, you know, he's been incredibly consistent as a professional uh, and as a player. And so, 
the opportunity to you know reward him late in the year um, with these uh, with these minutes and, and financially is is great. You know, we're happy to be able to do it. Hey, Coach. Um, last week at the Board of Governors press conference, Adam Silver talked about a lot of things, but one of the things he mentioned was the coaches challenge and the challenge system in general and how in the off season they might adapt it to where if a coach wins their challenge, they're able to keep it. So I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that front at all. Uh, I'd be in support of that. I would be in support of that. I think, um, you know, the time, the reason they wouldn't do that would be um, the time that they're adding to the game. But in reality, a lot of those challenges would happen during mandatories if they happened earlier in the game. So it wouldn't change the overall duration of the game. If coaches started challenging plays in the second quarter, very rarely is a second quarter timeout uh, additional. It's usually a mandatory anyways, and they can review it within the mandatory window. So I think you know that's what they're balancing. They don't want to add a bunch of time to the game um, because of the fan experience, and that's understandable. But I, I think that would be a low cost proposition, and I think uh, the goal would be you know to operate within that constraint. You know you want to not make the games three hours, but at the same time. Um, you want to get the calls right, and as many calls right as possible, so that the two teams that are on the court um, are the ones determining the outcome of the game. And you know, I, as a result of that, I would be in support of anything like that. And, and you mentioned like a challenge in the second quarter, for instance. Have, have there been times where, in the first half of games, you wanted to challenge something, you knew you'd win it, but because you lose your challenge for later in the game, you kind of just decided might as well just save it until later. Um, yeah, but rarely for me, I'm probably an extreme, you know, versus other coaches that you'll talk to about that. Um, I tend to be more aggressive with it. I, I use more challenges um, and earlier in games just because there's no guarantee that you're always going to be able to find a play that's a winnable challenge. And there's no guarantee that if you save it for the end of the game, that the end of the game's going to be close. You know, if you're down by 14 or up by 20 with two minutes left to go in the game, your challenge doesn't do you much good in those situations. So. Um, I've, you know, we're of the mindset of using it pretty aggressively um, because you're just not going to have a, you, you can't use it every night. You know, you don't know, you don't always have a call you think you can get. So, uh, but there are times, yes, when like an out of bounds call in the second quarter where your guys tell you it was off the other team, the benefit of that probably doesn't outweigh the cost. But like I said, we tend to be more aggressive than most with that. You talked about running to the finish line and making sure you guys play to your identity. Is there anything in particular that you want to see tonight going up against in the first team specifically that? Uh, it's a team that shoots the ball well, they move the ball well, um, they're really well coached and, and disciplined. Their players play their roles and they make the right plays. And so, you know, you need multiple efforts um, to play against a team like this. Uh, you got to contest shots, you got to finish on the glass, uh, and then hopefully get out and run on a little bit. So, you know, we'll be hoping to do that.